Hello, I am Ashish Arora. I work as a senior scientist in the Molecular and Structural Biology Division of CSIR Central Drug Research Institute, Lucknow. I will present paper 8, Medical Physics and module 26, which deals with structures of peptides by NMR spectroscopy. The objectives of these modules are to tell you what are peptides, what is the relevance of NMR spectroscopy for biomolecular characterization, why do we need to do 2D NMR for peptides, what is NOE and the concept of transfer nosy, what are sequential resonance assignments for peptides, how the structure is determined through NMR spectroscopy, and then we will take an example of peptide NMR peak assignment and structure determination, a case study of VG16KRKP, a 16 residue antimicrobial peptide and this has been deposited in the PDB as 5WYE.PDB. Here at the outset, I should tell you that this module has been prepared by Dr. Anirban Bhunia of Bose Institute, Kolkata. What are peptides? Conventionally, polypeptides are defined as short chains of amino acid monomers linked by peptide bonds as shown in the figure. Peptide is equal to chain of amino acids. There is the N terminus in between the CO and H are the peptide bonds and then you have the polypeptide chain which ends at the C terminus. Majority of peptides are classified into two into well conserved families and classes having signature biological characteristics and significance. Because of their biological significance, peptides have gained huge attention in the past couple of decades. 1D NMR spectrum of our reference peptide VG16KRKP which has 16 residues overall is shown. In this spectrum around 10 you see the peak from the side chain of tryptophan which is an indole. So, you see the indole NH. Then between 8 and 9 you see the various amide NH and before that you see aromatic signals around 3.5 to 5 ppm. You get the signal from H alphas which are connected to C alphas and between 0 0.5 to 2.5 ppm you see peaks from various aliphatic protons. The standard that is used for aqueous sample is TSP and you see the peak of TSP at 0 ppm. Now as we can see the 1D spectrum is very complex for analysis and for any gainful information. So first for assignment of various signals to their particular amino acids, we have to run two dimensional homonuclear experiments for peptides as we have learned before, COSI and TOXI. As an example, the tyrosine molecule is taken. You see the, in COSI, you see peaks between directly vicinally coupled protons from NH to alpha H, NH becomes around 8.12 ppm and alpha H is around 4.55 ppm. Then from alpha H to the 2 beta H, one is at 3.03 .03 ppm and the other is at 2.98 ppm. While in TOXI, you see cross peaks between the NH which is at the 8.12 ppm and alpha H which is directly vicinally linked at 4.55 ppm but also with beta H at 3.03 .03 ppm and the second beta H at 2.98 ppm. Transferred nosy, TR nosy experiment is a variant of nosy in which the interaction between two different molecular systems can be studied. As we have learned, nosy is a homonuclear experiment for a single molecule species. It involves recording a 2D proton proton nosy spectrum for a low molecular weight molecule ligand in the presence of sub stoichiometric concentrations of the second molecule which is the macromolecule. This technique is majorly used for structural reduction from interactions in the micromolar to 
millimolar range. Since the kinetics of the majority of ligand macromolecule interactions is fast owing to the fast T2 relaxation caused by the macromolecule, they represent ideal condition or system for the observation of transferred NOEs. Next, the condition for observing transferred NOEs. In order to observe transfer NOE effect, the following condition should be fulfilled. N B dot sigma B should be very much higher than N F sigma F, where sigma is the cross relaxation rate and N is the number of molecules in the free or bound state, which are labeled as N F and N B respectively giving rise to positive and negative NOE peaks. The number of ligand molecules should be in far excess such that the ratio of ligand to macromolecule remains in the range of 10 to 30 is to 1. This is mainly because of NOE buildup and hence appearance of transfer NOE peaks is dependent on the difference in correlation time between the free and bound form. Since small molecules have a low molecular weight, they have short correlation time and hence exhibit small positive NOEs. However, upon binding to a high molecular weight macromolecule, they acquire the properties of the macromolecule, thus acquiring their high correlation time, which leads to generation of strong negative NOEs called transferred NOEs. Schematic description of transferred NOEs is provided in the figure. In blue, you have a small molecule and in green is the macromolecule and their on rates and off rates are shown. K off should be greater than 10 second inverse. So the green molecule macromolecule binds to the blue macromolecule and now you can see the signal. When the small molecule is free, you get nosy spectrum with diagonal peak and cross peaks that have a phase opposite to the diagonal peaks. And in transfer NOEs, the conformation of the molecule changes. Earlier you had different signals and now you have transfer NOEs with different signals. And also there is a change in the phase of the NOEs that come from transfer NOEs. And one can also record transfer ROEs in the transfer nosy and transfer rosy experiments respectively. Let us now look at a flow chart for structural characterization of peptide by NMR showing the various steps. First the sample is prepared and then NMR data collection and processing is done. The various experiments that are collected are COSY, TOXY and NOSY. Then one does sequence specific resonance assignments and dihedral restraints and also identification of long range NOEs from the nosy experiment. The dihedral and the distance restrained information is put into a structural calculation program, usually cyana and structural refinement using additional parameters is carried out. Final high resolution structures are deposited in the protein data bank. NMR sample preparation. The first and most critical step for NMR is the sample preparation. The sample should have correct concentration which mainly depends on the strength of the magnet. For example, a peptide sample of 0.5 millimolar strength is sufficient for data recording on a 700 megahertz NMR spectrometer. Other important parameters include sample pH which should be between 4.5 to 5.5 for peptides and temperature. Also, the sample should have deuterium oxide at a final concentration of around 10 percent for locking purpose. An internal external standard referencing compound like TSP or DSS is added for setting the 0 ppm chemical shift value. The chemical shift values for 20 amino acids are given in this figure. You can go through this list. It gives you the chemical shifts of various amino acids for NH, H alpha, H beta and all the other side chain protons. Next slide please. 
This slide shows the chemical shift pattern of 20 amino acids. The H alpha are shown in blue, the H betas are shown in green, the H gammas are shown in yellow and then the others are shown in other colors as indicated. Now how do we do sequential resonance assignment? That means how do we link one amino acid to its next one through the NMR chemical shifts? The starting point for sequ sequential assignment is the toxic spectrum where one can look for characteristic proton chemical shift patterns as just described and one can particularly look for alpha H of glycine beta H of alanine, delta H for leucine and isoleucine and beta H for aromatic amino acids. This is followed by a sequential NOE walk in the nosy spectrum which involves identifying inter-residual proton-proton interactions lying within 5 angstrom distance. The inter-residual cross signals are differentiated from the intra-residual ones by overlapping and comparing the 2D nosy with the 2D toxic spectrum as we will see. Specifically, a nosy spectrum gives the interactions between the H alpha or H beta, H gamma, H delta, H epsilon and NH of the first residue which is labeled as the ith residue with the amide proton NH of the next or I plus 1 residue. Proline residues introduce a break in the sequential connectivities due to the absence of amide proton in them. However, if the proline in the I plus 1 position is present in its trans configuration, then sequential alpha HI to delta H I plus 1 and delta H I plus 1 to NH I plus 2 cross signals can be observed. Through bond and through space correlations are shown in the figure. The intra residual blue arrows through bond coupling is obtained from the toxi spectrum. The inter residual or through space coupling is shown by red arrows and is obtained from nosy or rosy spectrum. Sequential walk between two sequentially linked amino acid is by the help of overlapping toxic and nosy experiment and this is shown in figure B. If you see for HNI plus 1 in the nosy spectrum, there are blue peaks which come from intra residue which match the toxic peaks but then there are additional red peaks and the position of these red peaks are the same as that of the HNI plus 1 toxic peaks which means that they are coming from the preceding residue and this is how you make sequential correlations. Here the correlations that are shown are between H alpha I and HNI plus 1 and H beta I and HNI plus 1. As you know a protein or a peptide has distinct secondary structure conformations alpha helix, beta sheets, specific turns and then motifs and then domains. But here for peptides, we will simply learn about the secondary structure conformations. Let us deal with the alpha helical conformation. Alpha helix is the most common motif found in many peptides and proteins. It is a right handed spiral and we also have a left handed spiral and incidentally the scientist who discovered alpha helix uh, Linus Pauling who got the Nobel Prize, he first drew a left handed spiral. So alpha helix is a right handed spiral where each residue corresponds to a 100 degree turn such that the helix has 3.6 residues per turn. In the alpha helix, each residue corresponds to a transition of 1.5 angstrom such that one full turn or pitch of the helix is 5.4 angstrom. The backbone amide group NH of ith residue is hydrogen bonded to the backbone carbonyl CO of I minus 4 residue i.e. 4 residues earlier along the entire amino acid sequence for an alpha helix. A typical alpha helix is characterized by three major interactions apart from the 
normal sequential contacts obtained. These include DNN I to I plus 1, D alpha N I to either I plus 3 or I plus 4 and D alpha beta which is I to I plus 3. In this figure, the major intrahelical contacts and distances for observable NOEs are shown. You have to follow the figure with the help of uh, the various arrows and boxes that are shown and these boxes show you the H alpha HN distances, the I and I plus 1 residues are labeled and HN and HN distances, again the I and I plus residues are labeled so that the NOE summary that we get in terms of distances is that we have D alpha N I plus 1 which is 3.5 angstrom, we have alpha N I plus 2 which is 4.4 angstrom, alpha N I plus 3, 3.5 angstrom, D alpha N I plus 4 which is 4.4 angstrom. Then we have D N N I plus 1 which is 2.5 angstrom, D N N I plus 2 which is 4 angstrom and D N N I plus 3 which is 4.9 angstrom and could a give a weak NOE peak. We have very characteristic D alpha beta I plus 3 and this is in the range of 2.5 to 4.5 angstroms and all these distances that are less than 5 angstroms will give the NOE cross peaks in nosy spectrum. We have beta sheet confirmation. A beta sheet is an important motif that consists of beta strands which are joined together by hydrogen bonds between the backbone groups to generate a pleated zigzag sheet light structure. This hydrogen bond is formed between the backbone amide and carbonyl groups present on two different strands. A very important characteristic of the beta sheet is that they are directional and form different sheet structures depending on the arrangement of the adjacent strand with respect to each other. In an anti-parallel sheet, the successive beta strands are in alternate directions such that the N terminus of one strand remains adjacent to the C terminus of the next. In contrast, a parallel sheet has all N termini strands oriented in the same direction forming a non-planar structure. A typical beta sheet is characterized by the presence of H alpha HN, H alpha H alpha and HN HN interactions apart from the normal sequential contacts obtained. The distances and observable NOEs in an anti-parallel beta sheet are shown in terms of H alpha HN distances and H alpha H alpha and HN HN distances. As we know that the characteristic of an anti-parallel beta sheet is that it has Two, point, 2 hydrogen bonds between CO and NH of the adjacent strands that are close together and then there is a space and then again there are two bonds, hydrogen bonds that are close together. The distances are marked with arrows and are shown in boxes and these distances will give you NOE cross peaks in the nosy spectrum. In anti-parallel beta sheet, the two strands run in opposite directions. And this figure here shows you distances and observable NOEs in a parallel beta sheet. Again, we show the H n H alpha distances and H alpha H alpha and H n H n distances. Now, in parallel beta sheet, as we know, is that all the hydrogen bonds are similar and the gapping between them is also same the two strands of the parallel beta sheet run in the same directions. Now, long range interactions. As we go to larger peptides, they are very important. Long range interactions play a major role in peptide structure determination. A long range interaction is described as I to greater than equal to I plus 5. That means there should be a gap of 5 amino acids to observe the NOE between any two protons usually occurs between residues located in different domains of a peptide amino acid sequence. 
interactions between such residues indicates that the peptide adopts such a structure in which they come within a distance of 5 angstrom of each other and thus give an NOE resonance peak. Such interactions play important role in paving the overall structure of the peptide by generating specific turns and loop motif which generates an overall compact and globular form. Torsional angles defining backbone conformation. There is a figure showing the angles phi, psi and omega. Peptide backbone conformation is defined by the torsional angles phi and psi that describe the rotation around the N C alpha and the C alpha C O bonds respectively. These two angles have a common C alpha between them. The two torsional angles help in providing flexibility to the peptide backbone which leads to generation of secondary structures and specific folds in the overall structure. In a good quality correct structure, these angles will be in the allowed region of the Ramachandran plot. The coupling constant can be incorporated in the Carr plus equation to determine the phi angles. J phi is equal to cos square phi plus B cos phi plus A in which J phi is the coupling constant, phi is the dihedral angle and A, B and C are empirically derived parameters. The torsional angle omega between C O and N usually remains fixed at 180 degree because of partial double bond character. Distance and con conformational constraints for structure calculations. The NOEs between proximal proton pairs are unambiguously assigned for structure determination. The NOE cross peaks are converted into distance constraints by giving an upper and lower distance limit. The lower bound distance constraint is often fixed at 2 angstrom which is equivalent to the sum of the van der Waals radii of the two non-bonded protons. The upper bounds are based on NOE strengths as follows. If there is a strong NOE, then the distance is around 3.5 angstrom. If there is a medium NOE, then the upper bound is taken from 4.0 to 4.5. If there is a weak NOE, it is between 4.5 to 5. And if it is very weak, it is taken between 5 to even 5.5 angstrom. Dihedral angle constraints are derived from the experimentally determined values for phi by Karpas equation and psi dihedral angles of the peptide backbone. These angles are set to such values that the amino acid residues have full degree of conformational freedom. Algorithm for structure calculation from NMR data. Structure calculation is usually done by the software Cyana, which is Combined Assignment and Dynamics Algorithm for NMR application. This program does automatic structure calculation on the basis of the distance and angle constraints generated from nosy and cozy NMR experiments respectively. The conformational constraints are subjected to iterative annealing and molecular dynamic simulation in the provided torsional angle degree of freedom. The Cyana software requires three major input files, the distance constraint dot UPL, the angle constraint dot ACO and the sequence file dot SEQ to generate 100 low energy structure in the form of dot PTB file. From this 20 lowest energy structures are calculated along with an ensemble structure and an overview file explaining the quality of the structure. This file is .ovw. Good quality structure are characterized by low backbone and heavy atom RMSTs, presence of large number of unambiguous non-overlapping NOEs and very few to no distance violations. NMR structure determination of VG16KRKP, a 16 residue peptide. As a case study, we will try to assign the spectrum of this peptide when it is bound to E. coli lipopolysaccharide LPS. The sequence of this peptide is as follows, the amino terminal, valine, alanine, arginine, glycine, tryptophan, lysine, 
arginine, lysine, cysteine, proline, leucine, phenylalanine, glycine, lysine, glycine and glycine at the C terminal. The concentration of peptide is taken as 0 0.5 millimolar at pH 4.5. The toxi and transfer nosy spectrum were recorded at a ratio of ligand peptide to macromolecule LPS of 30 is to 1. From the sequence of VG16KRKP, we see that there are a total of 4 glycine residues which can be easily identified by the presence of their characteristic alpha H protons in the toxi spectrum. But the real task is to identify position of these residues which can be estimated by careful analysis of the nosy spectra and conducting the sequential NOE walk. The toxi and nosy combination is also used for the assignment of the remaining amino acids. Here you see toxi and nosy spectra of VG16KRKP bound to E. coli LPS. You have the toxi spectrum shown in red on the left and the nosy spectrum shown in blue on the right. 12 distinct amino acid spin systems are seen in toxi shown by dashed vertical lines and in the bar you see the beta H of aromatic cysteine and delta H of arginine and lysine and in the cyan box you see beta, gamma and delta protons of aliphatic residues in the toxi spectrum. In the nosy spectrum, as you can see, there are many, many additional peaks. So, this shows the residues or the protons that are close in space. Sequential NOE walk for residue specific assignment. In this peak, as you can see, various residues are now labeled. In the nosy, we will look for NOE between H alpha of the ith residue and NH of the I plus 1 residue. A2 to C9 can be easily assigned in the spectrum. Due to presence of proline, P10, there is a break in sequential walk. L11 is identified easily because of its characteristic beta H's chemical shift. The NOE between P10 delta and L11H right in the center top of the spectrum is also identified and the presence of C9 alpha H, P10 delta H confirms that the C9 P10 bond adopts trans conformation. You can see various residues uh, again right in the center you see A2 to R3 and then uh, around 8.45 you see the peak of A2 which is going to V1. So, right there at um, crossing of uh, vertically of around 4.1 and horizontally around 8.5 you see V1 A2 going to A2 and then from here you have going to A2 R3 and so on and, and so forth. This is how the sequential walk is done. The aromatic aliphatic NOEs. The aromatic residues tryptophan and phenylalanine show large number of NOEs with the side chains of aliphatic amino acid residues such as leucine, lysine, cysteine and alanine. The indole ring proton N epsilon H of tryptophan which resonates at 10.16 ppm also showed NOEs with the aliphatic amino acid residues as is shown in the strip on the leftmost strip and then you have the NOEs between the aromatic residues in the range of 7.1 to 7.6 ppm with different aliphatic residues. Now, various NOEs are plotted as shown in figure B and the number of NOEs for a particular residue is compiled as shown in figure C. Next slide please. Now, we look at the NMR structure of the VG16KRKP peptide. Structure of VG16KRKP bound to LPS as calculated with Cyanar 2.1 software is shown in the figure A and B. 
The ensemble has backbone RMSD of 0 0.26 angstrom and this is shown in figure A. The ensemble structure shows good convergence for all residues. The molecule adopts a loop structure and a single molecule is shown in figure B. Though any characteristic alpha helix and beta sheet conformation are missing from this structure of the VG16KRKP peptide, the peptide upon interaction with LPS forms a loop structure which is stabilized by several long range interactions. VG16KRKP adopts an amphipathic structure that is it shows clear charge separation. This is generated because the hydrophobic residues A2, W5, L11 and F12 come together to form a compact and dense hydrophobic hub while the positively charged cationic residues R3, R7 and K8 remain exposed towards the solvent front. The residues at the C-terminal G13 to G16 remained highly dynamic due to the absence of any NOE contacts. Since VG16KRKP is an antimicrobial peptide, generation of charge separation in the structure plays a very important role in making sure that the peptide interacts with the bacterial outer membrane lipopolysaccharide and thus exhibits its membrane membranolytic effects. Now, with this, we have come to the end of this module and let us summarize. Peptides are short chains of amino acid monomers up to 50 residues in length linked by amide or peptide bonds. The 1D NMR spectrum of peptides gets crowded as the number of residues increase. To analyze various amino acid spin systems in peptides, 2D COSY and TOXY experiments are used and the inter-residue contacts are obtained by 2D nosy experiment. Interactions between a peptide and another macromolecule can be studied by transferred NOEs. Sequential resonance assignments are carried out by first assigning the spin systems in TOXY based on the characteristic patterns for various amino acids and then by comparing it with nosy spectra to characterize the H alpha I to NH I plus 1 cross signal. The peptide structure is calculated from short, medium and long range distance constraints and dihedral angle constraints using a torsional dynamics algorithm, usually cyana. In the presence of LPS, the antimicrobial peptide VG16KRKP adopts an amphipathic loop structure with the hydrophobic residues forming a hub and the positively charged residues exposed to the solvent. Thank you.